So I was on this fucking pirate ship. Um, well, it's not a real pirate ship. I, I, I need a backup. I need a backup. I'm even fucking going to tell this story. Okay. There was... Um, I don't even know how to begin this. There was this guy. I'm not going to put his name out there because he probably just wouldn't appreciate it. Um, but basically, there's this guy. He's gay. Um, you know the actor Greg Kinnear? Greg Kinnear. I don't know if Greg Kinnear is out at this point or not, but this guy fucked Greg Kinnear in the ass and filmed it. All right? And um, he, you know, had camera in the closet, and he filmed it, and he fucking told Greg Kinnear, like, look, I got this tape of us having sex. And this was, like, in the mid-'90s, uh, like, early-'90s even. It might even be the late-'80s. I don't even know. But, um... Somewhere in that time span, uh, you know, when, when it would have destroyed Greg Kinnear's career for him to be gay. You know, this is before Greg Kinnear just kind of fell off the map all on his own. So, uh, basically, he ended up conning Greg Kinnear out of like $7,500,000, something like that. And, um, you know, basically to keep this tape from coming out. And he used that money... To I mean, he'd already been saving up some money before then, but he used that money to buy this fucking pirate ship that he was just in love with. Like, he was obsessed with this fucking pirate ship. Now, it was not a real pirate ship, okay? At some point in, like, the 70s, there were some anthropologists that built this fucking replica pirate ship. Uh, but I guess their funding got cut and they had to kind of abandon it before it was totally finished. Uh, it was still, I mean, it was seaworthy. It was sitting there on a, on a, by a dock, just kind of floating around, and it had been there for a long time. It had been for sale for a long time. Um, the town kind of didn't know what to do with it, and, uh, you know, they, um, they ended up selling it to this guy that I mentioned earlier, the guy whose name I'm admitting. I'm, I, sh I guess I should give him some name just so, you know, we have some, you know, uh, uh, Something to call him, because otherwise it's just going to be that one guy. You know who I'm talking about. We'll just call him Bob, because that's a good generic name. Bob, the gay guy who is obsessed with pirate ships. Um, so he buys this fucking pirate ship, okay? And he turns it into a, a, gay, a gay bar, okay? In the middle of fucking practically nowhere. Just like, this is my random pirate-themed gay bar on a ship. And um, he was, I mean, he had to, he, they wouldn't let him keep it on the water. He had to bring the ship up on land. He paid some contractors to do some renovations. Basically, they converted this entire fucking pirate ship that was built by these anthropologists in the fucking 70s into a fucking gay bar in the middle of nowhere that no one fucking came to. So after, like, it was called Cabin Boys. I shit you not. Um, anyway, so after a while, um... The, no one's coming to this fucking bar, okay? No one's, no one, no, no gay guy is like, you know, we could go to one of these many clubs in the city, but hey, I heard there's a fucking pirate ship bar with no one in it that's only 45 minutes outside of town, so let's do that. No, no one's making that decision. Um, especially since he wasn't even, like, advertising it. Like, if I had a pirate ship that was also a gay bar, I'd, like, have, I'd fucking find some really big muscular dude to fucking dress up as a pirate and fucking plaster posters everywhere and be like, yeah, you want to fucking see this guy? You got to come to fucking cabin boys. Um, anyway, so uh, after a while, it ceased to even be a gay bar. It would just be the bar where people would go to, you know, kind of just be left alone. You know, like loners. It was the loner bar, you know, because no one wanted to go to it because it was so absurd and it was a gay bar. So it ended up just being a place where a bunch of mostly fucking straight men would go just to be alone. Like, not they're not there to hook up with anybody. They're just there to get drunk and just be like, fuck life, you know? So I would go there. I wouldn't even fucking drink alcohol, though. Even though I did drink alcohol all the time, I just wasn't going to pay bar prices. I would just go there to write in my little notebook. And um, and I would just get, like, chocolate milks because they had chocolate milk. And it was pretty good. It was like, um, 
I don't know. They they made it by hand, but they always used enough syrup. Like it wasn't like where they were really stingy with the syrup. Anyway, I'm sitting in there one night, and uh, this guy comes up to me, and he he starts. This is this is years after the the whole. I mean, this isn't like. I don't want you to think we're still in the early 90s here because obviously I wouldn't be in a fucking bar. I mean, this is like, you know, more recently. This is like a few years back. Um, I'm at the bar. This guy comes up to me and we start striking up a conversation. He asks me what I'm writing, blah, blah, blah. We fucking talk for a little while until finally uh, he tell he starts telling me about his daughter. He's like, man... I know I shouldn't say this about my daughter, but she is a fucking spoiled cunt. And I was kind of like, wow, I mean, I'd never really heard, I'd never really heard a man call his own daughter a cunt before. You know, I'm sure it happens. I mean, I've not been around a lot of, like, my only, I, I have sisters, but I don't really know any of them. I wasn't really there for their upbringings or anything like that. So I don't really know much about that. Um... So it kind of caught me off guard, like, oh, wow, I, you know, what, 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 what'd she do? What's going on? And he's like, well, this is an older guy. He's, like, in his 50s. He, he starts telling me, like, you know, she, she just got off on her own. She's at college. But he, she was always a spoiled little brat, just always fucking wandered her way and shit. And um, the mom, his, this guy's wife, would constantly, uh, would constantly give him shit, you know, just – you know, don't fucking get after her, you know, just always telling him, you know, he would be like that she needs discipline. Our daughter needs discipline. And the mom was just like, fuck, no, she don't need no discipline. She just needs to get her way. So it goes on like this. And his wife always wins the fight. You know, the, the, the kid always gets her way and she becomes more and more spoiled to the point where, you know, she becomes one of those MTV kind of girls. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like she could be on the reality show. She could be the girl crying that her parents got her the wrong kind of car for her 16th birthday, that kind of shit. So she becomes like that. And, uh, and anyway, so this guy has just broke up with his wife because the kid, the, the fact that the kid was living with him was the only thing keeping him together. Once she left, they split up. And, uh, so he's looking for, Something a little different now. He he's kind of like, I don't really want another wife. I just want like some kind of like kinky slutty girl who's just all about like you know me, basically. And um, so he's looking for that. He's on this site called Fet Life, which is uh, uh basically like the fetish, kinkster version of Facebook, and he's joining local groups looking for somebody. And then he fucking sees that his own daughter has a fucking profile on FetLife. So he immediately closes his account and then creates a fake account and goes back and starts looking through her fucking profile. And, uh, and he looks at me in the bar and he's like, and she, he, he's like, and her profile is all about how she's looking for a daddy. She's looking for someone to discipline her. She's looking for someone who's going to give her the boundaries she needs and all this shit. And I'm just sitting there thinking, man, if I'd have raised her my way, she wouldn't be on this fucking site wanting that shit now. And I'm like, well, you don't really know that. I mean, that's that's just speculation. I mean, you don't... You, I mean, it's kind of like a funny, amusing thing in, in a kind of a fucked up way that, you know, you were never allowed to, get, you know, discipline your daughter the way you wanted to, and now here she is looking for discipline in a sexual way, and she's looking for a daddy, you know, almost as if she's... I mean, I guess he almost felt like he had failed as a father, not because she grew up to be a slut, but because because she wanted some new daddy. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, we, we started talking about it, and, and you know, I, I started trying to just convince him, like, you know, it's not necessarily your fault. Like, it's, it, it could be a number of things. Like, you, you know, you don't know where this came from in her head. You don't, know, you, know, you don't know what the origin of this really is. So he's like, well, he starts, like, trying to offer me money. Like, he's like, I'll give you $200 if you create a profile and you go talk to her and you try to pick her brain and just try to figure out where these feelings came from. Because I just, I have to know. I just can't live with this shit. And I can't talk to her myself. I can't confront her. 
And I'm like, I don't know, man. That seems pretty unethical. He's like, come on, just do it. Just do it. You just, you just create a fucking profile on this fucking site. Just go, go fucking talk to her and just see. Just see if, 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 if it's my fault. That's all. I just, I just need to know if it's my fucking fault. I'm like, look, I'll do it, but I'm not going to take your money. I'm just going to fucking... I'm just going to do this shit. So he gives me your screen name. I fucking get his email address. He gets mine. And I put it off for a few days because I'm honestly kind of hoping that this is just this guy... He's just drunk. He's drunk. He don't know what he's saying. Once he sobers up, he's going to be like, I'm not going to fucking get some other guy to spy on my daughter by pretending to fucking be interested in being her daddy and blah, blah, blah. But no. Once he's sober, he still wants to go through with it. And I've kind of agreed to it. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I just got to do this. So I go and I create the fucking profile. I get on the site. I find her profile. I read through it. I read about like, oh, I need a daddy to spank me and all that stuff. And um, and so I, I, I start writing her, and she starts writing me back. And uh, finally, like, she starts getting me. She becomes, like, infatuated with me. I guess I'm just saying all the right things. I'm like, yeah, I'm your daddy. I'm going to spank you, whatever. And, um, you know, I'm going to give you that discipline. You know, the discipline you never got as a girl and all this stuff. And, uh, and she was really responding to it, you know, so, uh, finally, like, finally, she, I, I just start working up the courage to fucking talk to her about her childhood. I'm like, okay, you know, like what I'm like, okay, let's just, let's put this shit aside for a second. Let's just talk as two people here, you know, like, what do you think? cause these feelings you know what do you think made and she's like oh my father was such a pussy and he just never fucking put his foot down and all this stuff and uh (laughs) so basically confirming all this this all the guy's worst fears that i met at the bar you know like i'm like oh man fuck so and i'd already suspected that before you know but now i knew for a fact and so I had to write him that night and be like, look, man, uh, your daughter, you know, it's, it's as you feared, man. It's as you feared you, uh, she said that you were basically like way too passive and you didn't discipline her enough. And he's like, but it was my fucking wife, man. I wanted to discipline her. I made that entire story up. 